Hi guys, today we are talking about all the different options that you've got for staking Monstera. I've got a few examples, there's some stuff I don't have, but uh, I can, we can talk about that. The most common thing people use to stake houseplants is these coir poles. They get a bit of bad press from people, but as you know, it's a stick to attach a plant to, it's fine. They're really easy to get hold of. I mean, I got mine from a garden centre for 2 99 and it is... I think this one's a meter, you know, they're pretty accessible. You either like or don't like the way they look, so if you like them, get one, if you don't, don't. What I like about these is there is no maintenance. You can wet them, but they will dry out incredibly quickly and it you'll be fighting a losing battle. I just wouldn't bother. And if they stay wet too long, they can get quite kind of manky and mouldy and grim. This is just a stick that you will use greening pins to attach your plant's stem to. This is a greening pin, it's just a little metal, I was going to say hairpin then, but they're much sharper than that. So yeah, I don't use them anymore, but they are totally fine if you're not, if you don't want to overthink it, if you just want something to stop your plant falling over, these are totally fine. I like that you don't have to maintain them. I love, like, the benefits of moss bowls are, like, far-reaching for your plant, but as someone that forgets to water moss bowls, these are just a less stressful option. I do have some moss poles. A lot of people make their own because it tends to be the cheapest way to do it. I've never done that. I assume just laziness. I don't really know why I've not. I've just not really bothered. But there are more options coming out all the time. So you don't. You certainly don't need to make your own. This, these are the first ones I tried. I got these online. Um, you just fill them with moss and attach your plant. I've just used garden ties. And you keep the moss wet and the plant will attach over time. Now mine hasn't because I didn't keep it wet. There's bits where it's like... I've, I'll have like been diligent about it for a bit and it'll have got attached. There are advantages to allowing the roots to grow into the moss, but just having the plant grow upwards does benefit it. I mean, this plant, I know she's messy at the moment, but she has started putting out really, really nice growth. She's in Lekka, so it's not very secure. There are issues with them. Now, the main issue with these is, I, I, I can tell you how to keep them moist. We'll do that later. The issue with these is one of the reasons a lot of people like to keep plants on moss bottles is the roots grow into the moss and basically as you grow it up you air layer every node as it goes so if you want to propagate you can just take a cutting and it's already rooted. Problem with these is these holes are really small so there's basically no way to get the roots out without damaging them so if you ever want to change the moss pole you'll end up damaging the roots and when your plants get big the secondary root systems can really benefit the plant so if you remove that you might see a bit of a decline in health another thing that's good about these is they clip together so you can just keep adding more that is one thing that the coir poles don't do as far as i'm aware they might have that now where you can like stack them but yeah these are fine if you just if you want something that the aerial roots will grow into and that will keep your plant upright these are fine. A better option of a moss pole is something... Oh, I'll bring her right... Right, I'll try and bring her over. I've had this mo this monstera for a long time. She doesn't grow very quickly because she's very, very old. She has a... I mean, her stem's like that thick. And I just wanted to put her on a moss pole just to see if that would help her. What I normally do is just put the aerial roots back into the soil and that props her up fine. And when you put a monstera on a moss pole, you want the front of the monstera facing out, which so that's the bit with the leaves, and you want the aerial roots, which is the back of the stem, to what, you know, so it can attach. Unfortunately, Monstera grow aerial roots at the back and leaves at the front when they grow up something. When they don't grow up something, they do whatever they like. And so the front and back of mine are basically, basically the aerial roots and the leaf leaves come out of the same side. So these are the leaves and they're pointing forwards. So I can see what should be the back of the stem you can see the moss pole and it's because the moss pole <laughs> i'll take it off this is why you should get them on moss poles as soon as you can so the leaves are coming out here leaning forwards and so are the aerial roots and as you can see i've just she's propped up just by putting the aerial roots back in the soil and they've also started to um pop out again. I quite like these because I grow my hoya up them. So you can see she's definitely leaning forward and so are the aerial roots. So it's not ideal. So this is a moss pole I've got for it. Obviously it's not very big. And you just buy the plastic thing and fill it with moss. I think the plastic thing was I think the plastic thing was six ninety nine and I think the moss was six ninety nine. So the moss will last 
ages and so will the plastic thing so it's a more expensive option but for the health of your plant it's probably a if you if your aim is to like size your plants up this is a be better option the holes are a bit bigger so you can pull the plants out better plus you can kind of undo it from the back and kind of it's easy to like feed it through gently because you can push them through from both sides uh, what I do like about these is that these just pop into the soil you can just pop them in they are not the most sturdy you might struggle if you had a really tiny plant but yeah they're, they're a fine option you do need to keep the moss moist and as I said that's what I struggle with but I do have a hack and if you follow my website for a while you probably are sick of me talking about this I don't think I mentioned it on my YouTube channel. My life changed when I stole this from my boyfriend. It is a, oh my god, it's a pressure sprayer thing. You just pump it up and then water comes, you, it's got a little trigger thing. And then, oh god, just water my window. Um, these are brilliant for keeping moss balls wet because I've seen all the hacks about putting holes in cups and sitting them on the top of the moss pole and people do it with, I've tried it with plastic bottles. It works okay, but the problem is if the moss gets really hydrophobic, it will just run through it and it won't soak the middle. And I found that when you have to rehydrate moss, you kind of have to rehydrate it all at once. You can't just hope that it trickles down over time. So these, so good. Now, I use this for everything because it makes watering so much more fun. It's not ideal for a full water in summer because you have you would have to be there forever. Although um, on Reddit yesterday somebody said you can take it you can take this off and it has a similar stream to a watering can. Ooh. Ooh. Oh and they were right. Do I have a plant I can water? Oh the Tony won't mind. I kind of want to show you without wetting my own leg. You're just going to have to accept that. Yeah, oh, good hack, good hack. Um, Stranger on Reddit. But anyway, where was I? But in winter, the spray section is brilliant because if you really thoroughly water your plants in winter, I know you'd be doing it less often, but the plants stay wet for quite a long time and that can cause root rot. It doesn't always because the plants kind of aren't really doing as much. And also if you have a really waterlogged soil, not really waterlogged soil, but like normally damp soil but for a long time, it can cool your room down quite a lot. So if you water more or less the same as what you were watering in summer but with less water, so like just watering them less thoroughly, it kind of, it's plenty to keep the plants alive but it doesn't create a damp atmosphere so yeah love this honestly get one they're only like i'm sure you can get them for like 15 quid and it's recently made like pretty ones it's not the best and you can do all your plants in one go i normally have to refill i use a five liter water bottle and then i pour that into my little teapot and i normally have to fill it up four times this is five liters and i only have to fill it up once obviously they're getting less water but if you really can't be bothered to get everything out and water drips everywhere and it's just a nightmare and you're really not feeling watering your plants but you know you need to this this is a great option back to moss balls so that's like traditional moss we've done like moss balls and coir balls another option is trellises i've never used trellises because i don't think they are particularly suited to plants like monstera which is what people are normally looking to put on a moss pole just because they only tend to have one stem that like one plant will have one stem that's like tends to be how they work but often you have multiple plants in one pot which i suppose you could you could do a trellis but i've just never found a trellis that was like sturdy enough or the right shape to suit a monstera what you could do and what i've seen people doing is using bamboo canes which is another common way that people use to prop their monstera up and then sort of making a trellis you know putting your two putting your bamboo canes in the pot and then lashing them like crossway so like making your own trellis uh, they work okay i just don't think they do a good enough job at anything to warrant if you want to do, if they work for you that's fine but in my experience my monster i don't right my monster is much bigger she's old she hasn't got many leaves but i mean she is a sizable creature uh, she'd just laugh at a trellis 
they are good for if you have a monstera that is in you know those ones that have been kept in low light for a really long time so they've got a lot of really long thin stems and petioles and the whole thing's a mess trellises can be good for sorting those out it's not how i would sort it out because that would just fill me with horror i don't like i'm going to show you my philodendron golden dragon i'm proud of myself for not having just just cut him right back to the soil but monstera can grow like this as well if they're grown in low light Just this messy stems and petioles everywhere. Trellises can work for that. But as I say, I wouldn't spend the money on an actual trellis. I would just do two or three bamboo canes into the soil, just poke them in. And then you could lash, um, I was a scout, can you tell? You could lash like however many others to like, like as a cross section to make a trellis. Bamboo canes work just like a, a smaller coir pole. You don't need to maintain them, which is great and you can they're cheap and you can get really long ones which is also great if you've got a really tall plant oh these moss poles as well you can clip them into each other i think that's what these feet are actually for just to so you can like stack them monstera aerial roots and philodendron aerial roots don't tend to curl round things which Hoya are a great plant for trellises because they the way they grow with the, they vine first so they can anchor onto something they like wrap around it and then they sort of grow their leaves so they can grow up towards something trellises are great for hoya just because of the way they grow monstera it can work but they're not like a trellis won't help it the way that a moss pole would my preferred stake is a critiste pole i'll link a review below uh but if you've watched my videos you've seen them before they're made of potato peelings and elephant grass i believe they are very lightweight, they are, this one was $8.99. I love these because you don't need to keep them moist and the aerial roots adhere by themselves. Now, the guy, the critiste people messaged me on Instagram. I posted a picture of my Rifidophora decursiva, who, uh, her aerial roots are like grim. So, I posted a picture on Instagram and they messaged me and were like, do you keep yours moist? Because I've heard people say that that's better. And I was like, no, like, that's why I like them. They just adhere by themselves. And they come with these like pre-punched holes, which you then put little clips in and then you just clip it up. You can get attaches, attaches? You can get a thing to attach so you can stack them up. I just like the lack of maintenance. They don't, the plants don't get the root system that you would on a proper moss pole. That is the one advantage of a proper moss pole is you get they can make a secondary root system and then size up quicker. That isn't something they do in the wild, so it is not something they need. But from an aesthetic point of view, it is a way of sizing plants up without having to grow it up a 40 foot tree. I also like that these are really lightweight. They, I weighed them and the coir pole is lighter. I think it must just be the length, like the coir pole is light, lighter but longer. These stay up much better by themselves in smaller pots. These just wiggle around everywhere. So yeah, I highly recommend these. They, they're from the Netherlands. I got them from my local garden centre. I know they sell them in Grow Tropicals and a few other places in the UK. I have no idea if they're in the States yet. But they should be. They're so good. What is interesting is that all my plants love these. Um, even my golden pawpaws, which really wasn't, she really wasn't an aerial root girl, has kind of given in. As I said, my Rifidophora de Cursiva is... I actually don't like it's, it's creepy. The only one that won't do anything is my philodendron varicosum. She's like, absolutely not, I'm not growing aerial roots. But I think that must just be a, a species thing. When it comes to actually the process of putting a moss pole on, it's difficult to explain because what people what people want, I, I remember because it's what I wanted, was a stake and then I put it in and then I attach the stem and then I immediately have this like beautiful plant but they don't work like that they do need a little bit of time to get settled in and you need to sort of prune back the bits that don't fit and that kind of thing uh, also don't attach the petioles only attach the stem the petioles move and you basically just ups you'll just upset it 
Uh, it's not a big deal, but you will get... It's just better if you just attach the stem, not the petioles. As I was saying that, I was like, I actually don't know why, but I know that that is if you mustn't do that. So yeah, that's it for this week. I hope that was helpful. What I kind of wanted to impress on people was that it really doesn't matter. Pick something that you like the look of and that you think will work for the way you look after your plants. If you're not gonna... If you can't be bothered to wet a moss pole, get something that you don't need to maintain. That is what I've gone for and my plants are fine. Are they as big as they would be if I had a proper moss ball and looked after it properly? No, but I'm not going to do that anyway, so it doesn't matter. Alright, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!